That's well, awesome. it's Pastor Alan Jackson, and my guest today is Jordan Felice. Welcome. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Good I'm to stoked. have you back at the this church, awesome. yeah. part of our summer festival. We're having church outside, so. Man, I love it. I honestly love it. When we pulled up, I was like, this is this is amazing. So tell me what you've been doing through COVID-19 in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the year we'll never forget. Just just trying to survive, man. Trying to keep my head above water, man. It's crazy being at home with a two-year-old and a five-year-old. Oh. I mean, it is chaos. Like, and it's it's kind of Groundhog Day-ish too, because now it's gotten so hot that like you can't really do anything outside for very long. So it's like, well, I, I guess we'll watch Monsters Inc. three times today and. Well, I'll be making coffee all day because it's just trying to live. <laughs> but you know, when you're two, you can watch it every two or three hours, and it's a whole new day. Oh, it's a whole and it's a whole new movie somehow too. It's amazing. So, like, you're going nuts, but the kids are loving <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, they're so. loving it. And but really, honestly, it's it's been amazing. It really has been a really fun season because I'm I'm so used to being gone. You know, I'm gone for over 200 days a year usually, wow. and so um, being able to actually just be home. And like so into my family without like, you know, dad always having to go to work and, you know, do this or do that. And really is all I've had to be doing is we're, we're wrapping up my third record right now. But I mean, it's been maybe two weeks of work total in five months. So to squeeze it in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's <laughs> been awesome just to get to to be home, be a, be a husband and be a dad. So I think we all probably have um, learned some lessons through this season, you know, yes. about family time or slowing down or... You got any COVID lessons that you're trying to hang on to and not lose when oh, life opens man. back up? Dude, <laughs> countless, countless, honestly, really. Um, I think one of the ones that we've been really like uh, pushing through as a family and like my entire team um, has just been like the expectancy for like what God is doing and um, not missing some of the things that I feel like he's achieving through That's this good. season. Um, I think we can kind of, you know, sulk and, you know, sit here and just kind of, I don't know, just like fester in this like feeling that it's just never going to go away or, you know, fear and like all these things. But, you know, uh, our family and our team has just been like, you know what? No, like we're, we're actually so expect, let's be so expectant. Let's be so, uh, just in, in our word, in our, in our prayer life, let's just be like literally sowing into that and, and ask the Lord to reveal himself to us in new ways in new ways that we can address like, things in our lives that we we haven't had the time to, you know, or right. the time to in our families. Like, you know, I've, I've even feel, I felt like I've changed my parenting style like three times in COVID. You know what I mean? But it's been, it's honestly Your been. kids keep praying for a new parent. Literally, new probably. <laughs> yeah. But really it's, it's been amazing because you just see like this countenance on my wife, this countenance on, on me, on, on my, my friends, my family, my crew, you know, you just see a change in everybody. And it's just cause we've just been so diligent and being like, Lord, like we're expecting you to do things. We're expecting you to achieve things in us. Show us spots where we've needed to fix for a long time that we've just been too busy, to, too busy to see, you know? And, um, I mean that's just one lesson too, man. I mean, really, we've just—I feel like every day I'm I'm learning something new and just really like listening. You know, um, when this whole thing started, I felt like the Lord gave me two words, and it's super weird, but He gave me rest and He gave me dream, and so we've just been resting and dreaming and um, and in that listening. So yeah, yeah I agree. It's been a listening season because it's yeah. the only way to get through it. Yeah, you know, if you have any 100%. responsibilities. We have to hear from the Lord several times every day just oh, to figure it out. Yeah, that's the truth. Because every decision you make, somebody's not going to like it. Oh, and, oh, yeah, 100%. You know, when this whole thing started, they said, you know, go home for two weeks and flatten the curve and we'll yeah. all go back to normal. <laughs> I feel like the, some child that they put in time out and then the parent forgot about. Yes, literally. You know, and uh, several months that's later, true. we kind of sneak back out to see if yeah. it's okay. And yeah. It's time to go back to living, though. Oh, man. We have I, got to go back to living. I completely agree. And, you know— I mean, I think it's also one of those things, you know, I, I was talking about it today too, just ar around the church, but just 
in the, how funny it is that people were just so shocked to see more cases once we started kind of getting out again. I'm like, well, of course that's going to happen. Like, <laughs> duh. Like, I mean, how is this a shock to anybody? I mean, obviously we just opened up restaurants and we opened up coffee shops and all these places and downtown Nashville's opening up and all these, of course you're going to see some people that, you know, didn't know they were sick and now they're sick. And so, I mean, I don't want to be insensitive because like my mom, mm-hmm. my mom is actually super high risk and so is my father-in-law, but I'm also, my mom, my mom's been telling me, she's like, if anything, I'll stay home. You know, she's like, let's get, let's get the world back and running, you know? And I'm like, I feel you. So it's not about being insensitive. We, we are, have a tremendous concern. We pray every day for the people that are in high risk and most vulnerable. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we have got this new phrase now that begins a sentence with the safest thing to do. <laughs> As if what comes next yeah. is perfectly logical. Yeah. Well, yep. the safest thing to do is to drive 10 miles an hour. The <laughs> safest That's the thing truth. to do is never get in a boat. That's the safest the thing truth. to do is never to get on an airplane. And Maybe not even get in a car. Yes. <laughs> Literally. I know, and man, but so it's not living. We've got to figure yeah. out how to live through it. Agreed. And be prudent and Ag- wise oh, and help man. those that are vulnerable. And Agreed. Agreed. So thank you yeah. for stepping back out and being a part of what's going on. Oh, man, I'm so honored, really. It's, you live in uh, Nashville? I do. Yeah, we live in Franklin. It's, it's a we, we count great that. spot. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, we get some kind of, so, sometimes we'll get a little bit of a bad rap. It's funny, my, my in-laws uh, are um, moving here early next year, and we were actually in Murfreesboro because they've been looking around here and— um, it's a it's a great city, man. We my wife and I looked at a house here too, and the the whole greater Nashville area is just. I've I'm from California, so it's 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 just it's such a different vibe. You know what I mean? It's like people are so nice, and like I, my wife and I, it still shocks us because we'll be walking around, you know, the neighborhood with our kids or something, um, when it's not you know 150 thousand degrees outside, but. Uh, and so, and it's like everybody's waving, and I'm always just like, man, it's I love it here so much. It's just, it's just so nice to feel like you have people around you that actually care. I lived in Israel for a while, and it's a bit more direct. Okay, yeah. And I walked in, wanted to get like a package of gum or something in the yeah. counter, and I asked the lady how she was. She said, I don't care how you are, and you don't really care how I am. You're not in the States anymore. I don't want to be polite. What do you want? <laughs> Welcome to the Middle oh, East. Oh, my goodness. I'd be like— <laughs> Okay. So Southern doesn't work everywhere, but (laughs) sweet tea and Southern kindness is still a blessing. Man, it really is. It's nice. So is there any place in Nashville you like to play, like kind of off the beaten path, Bluebird? Man. um, Somewhere, some hole in the wall, we can come seek you out and it's no longer private. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, every once in a while I'll get a chance, uh, and I never really publicize it ever, but every once in a while, um, and I've only done it twice since I, but I used to, so I used to valet downtown. I used to park cars. Um, of course. Yes. And so, uh, but I worked at this place called the Listening Room Cafe. And it's basically like a bluebird, but uh, with like better food and like more food options and bigger stage, like not as cramped. Um but I met a bunch of, you know, people, you know, all kinds of people that would play there and, you know, work there and stuff. But every once in a while, I'll get over to listening room to play a song or two. And it's it's pretty fun. It's a good time. So do you have one of those crazy music row stories that you were working 11 jobs and <laughs> somebody heard you singing to yourself on the street you and know, signed you to a record deal? My story, I feel like, is so... Um, it's funny because I feel like people ask me all the time, like, how did you get to where you're at? And I feel like uh, it's funny because I feel like people kind of eye roll at me when I go, man, I just followed the Lord. But really, that's really what I did. I I was, so I was, I mean, I'm going to try to sum this up really fast, but I I was in a metal band uh, in from the time I was a senior in high school uh, till I was 22. Um, we traveled the country. We were all believers and we would get up on stages in these bars and we and theaters and all kinds of stuff, man. And <laughs> okay, we got a metal band yes. of believers playing bars across the country. Yes. It, and, it sounds like a joke we're gonna tell now uh, the yeah. ending. Okay. I wanna hear the punchline. <laughs> but literally we do we get up on stage and we'd tell people about Jesus every night. That's awesome. And it was so honestly some of my favorite like 
stories of salvation come from that season of life because you literally see people in in the lowest port parts of their lives meet Jesus for the first time and it's very very uh raw and but anyway so so I went from that to our band breaking up my wife and I had gotten married I took a job at a, at, at a church as a worship leader um and 3 months after I took this job I felt like the Lord said you should move to Nashville. Wow. And I was like, what? And I got a phone call from one of my one of my best friends and he had moved here. And um, he was just like, hey, this is so random, but I feel like the Lord is calling me to manage you. And I know you haven't written songs ever like by yourself. You've been in the band that you've been in. But like, if I paid for a flight for you to come to Nashville and I just had some friends right with you. Like, would you do it? And I was like, dude, this is so crazy because I feel like the Lord over the last like week has been kind of putting Nashville on me and I don't really, you know, I don't feel like it's confirmed, but like I'm in this investigative state, you know? And so I'm like, so of course, like, let's do it. So I flew out here. I fell in love with it. My wife and I are like, you know, four months, you know, married and we've been together for a really long time, but I came home and I just, I told, I told Jamie, I was like, I think we should move to Nashville. And so we prayed about it for a year, um, and a, almost a year to the date, no lie, we're riding our bikes in the little neighborhood we lived in, and we both at the same time, just like a lightning bolt, just boop, and like we turned and we looked at each other, and I was like, did you just feel like the Lord told us that we should go? Like, this is it for sure. Like, c complete confirmation. And she was like, I literally just got the same feeling. So I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. So we moved across the country and, uh, the day, so this is where things, why I'm saying like, really, I just followed the Lord because the day we got here, um, I had moved with one of my best friends and he, uh, and I had gotten coffee at the Starbucks in downtown Franklin. And, um, we were walking across main street in downtown Franklin. And this lady goes, Hey, you guys look like you're in a band. And uh, my friend David, who's so like crazy out, even more like extroverted than I am, you know, he's like, we're not in a band, but this guy is amazing and you got to <laughs> check him out. And, you know, he's just like, and I'm like, oh gosh, oh gosh. And, um, and she goes, well, well, what do you do? And, and I was like, well, honestly, we, we just got here five hours ago and we've been driving for the last, you know, two weeks, you know, across the country, barely making it, you know playing at churches and trying to do whatever we can to make it across the country to get here. Um, but I'm, I felt like the Lord called me here to do Christian music. And she goes, that's crazy. I was in a Christian band called FFH. And I was like, oh, yeah, like my parents have every one of your CDs. <laughs> and uh, she goes, well, hey, here's my email. Thank um, you for not saying eight tracks. That yeah, was better. Okay. Eight tracks. <laughs> um, and so she goes, here's my email. Um send me, do you have any songs that you can send me? I was like, yeah, I've got a couple. So I sent her a couple songs that night. And before I knew it, she had sent those three songs. I sent her to every record label in town. Wow. And all of a sudden just had a floodgate of labels and all this other stuff. And here I am. So I think it's going to work out. I've tried. <laughs> I, I think so. This following the Lord thing. There may be something yeah, to hey, it. Hey, there might be. There might be something. And yet I'm so afraid. <laughs> you know, when I feel like yes. the Lord prompting me. Oh, it's. I, I, usually my first really? reaction is kind of dig in my heels and go, why I don't want to do that. And why my plan is better. <laughs> Literally. And, and I don't know why that doesn't get better. But I mean, I, that's still kind of my go to response. But following, if you're listening and the Lord's inviting you to do something, say yes to the Lord. Oh, man. Whatever it yes. is. God's not foolish. He won't ask you to be reckless. He'll put a path in front of you. And if you say yes to him, you end up in a better place. That's the truth. Sometimes a little scary, but you end up in a better place. That's the truth. So you do a radio show? I do. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. Where yeah. is it and what's um, it about? So it's on Sirius XM The Message, and it's called Forward Message. Um, and What station number is that? Do you know? Uh, it's Sirius XM. I'm on Sirius too, but I don't know what channel I'm on either. So. I want to say I'm on the family channel. I think it's 63 maybe. 63? Yeah. Okay. Man, I ho I, ho I hope so. <laughs> oh God! If not, welcome um, to a new genre. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, man. So basically, what Ford Message is is it's just me getting to cultivate a radio show of just new artists that I feel like 
could potentially be somebody's new favorite artist. Um, mainly because that's kind of how my career started. I put out a song called The River and nobody had ever like heard of me or knew who I was. And it just exploded. And it was kind of one of these things where I felt like all these conversations I was having in Christian radio was that like everything has sounded the same and it always ends up sounding the same. And, you know, you know, we don't get a whole lot of like new artists that break or that, you know, you know, people connect with or, you know, and so ever since that, I, I've just kind of felt this passion to, to kind of give that back to other artists to say, Hey, like, this is a new artist. They've got something really special. This song is really anointed. This is really um, a cool moment, or this is a cool. an artist that maybe you would have never ever heard unless we just got to play them. Um, and so it's just been a really fun experience of showcasing, you know, new artists, but also showcasing songs that maybe aren't necessarily radio songs from other yeah. artists. You know, like because you know. Like Zach Williams, I know you guys had Matthew West and over the last couple of weeks. And I mean, both of them have some amazing songs on their records that haven't touched radio. And so um, it's fun to get to show people a different color, you know, every yeah. once in a while, you know, because I feel like radio is all kind of this one thing. Um, there's not a lot of uh, dy dynamic to it, you know, and so uh, I just wanted to kind of bring something that would that would lead people into a, a little bit more of a creative, like, I want to listen to music and dig into a, a record, you know, so. That's a cool idea. So when's it on? What time of day? Do you know? Uh, it airs every Saturday of the month. Um, I think it's at 3, 6, and 8, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, check yeah. it out. Yeah. You'll learn something about music. <laughs> so music's been a huge part of your life. Yes. Different styles, different genres. Oh, Yeah. You, so how Different old? Genres. I mean, from Lil, you've been playing since you got your first guitar at four? Yeah, actually, you know, um, so the first instrument I learned how to play was piano, um, and I hated it. I hated every second of it. Piano lessons? I hated it, I took man. piano lessons. Yeah. Ten yeah. stinking years, I hated it. <laughs> yeah, it was just a nightmare, I, I, and I started when I was in first grade, and um, one of my closest friends, it was his mom that gave me piano lessons. So I was always really distracted, you know, because I was like always just wanting to go hang out with my friend, you know. Uh, but, you know, it, it's kind of funny because once I hit uh, sixth grade, I, um, it sounds really, really weird, but I just started kind of hearing things in my head. And, uh, I would hear these sounds and I'd also hear like melodies and stuff. And so um, instead of practicing like, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, season three of some page book, I would just, I would be like, I'm not touching that. I'm just going to try to replicate what I hear. And so I'd sit down at the piano and I'd, I'd do that. And then my piano teacher would open up the book on, on, you know, Wednesdays, whenever I'd be there and she'd be like, okay, so can you, and I just kind of, fumble my way through it and she'd be like did you practice and I'm like no I didn't you know and she's like she's like well what do you what do you what's holding you back I'm like well actually I've been I've been doing this and I would just I just started playing her what what I was doing and um she ended up telling my mom at one point she was just like I I feel like I should stop you should stop paying me because Jordan is actually writing music he's not playing anything that I'm giving to him, but I'm just listening to the things and he's writing two or three piano things every week. Um, and so my mom was like, really? And she was like, yeah. And so then my parents kind of had this discussion with me about like, what, what is this? Like, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. I just started hearing stuff. And um, that kind of slowly led me into realizing that I, I actually kind of started thinking that I wanted to maybe produce music or do something like that. Um, but I didn't want to sing. I wanted nothing to do with singing. So I, I started actually kind of deferring away from everything and wanted to sink myself in the back. And so I started playing drums. So I I didn't know how to play drums, but I knew that I wanted to play drums. So I but sat down. Love that. Oh, well, they never, they never 
never in their life they were like, we're not buying a drum set. So I was like, okay. So I would show up to my youth group an hour early every Sunday and I'd go sit at my youth group drum set and I'd teach myself how to play drums. So I did that for a year and ended up being able to make it onto the worship team. And uh, then that kind of led to this (laughs) moment where one Sunday morning, the worship leader for our youth group, he just didn't show up. And uh, my, I'm like, I'm nervous just talking about it because I literally, I was shaking. Um, and my my youth, uh, my youth pastor, he walked up to me. His name is Pup, and Pup walked up and he goes, Jordan, you're the only person that knows these th- these songs. Like you, you ha- like, can you sing them? Like I know you know them. And I was like, I've never sang in front of anybody in my life. Like I'm not doing that. And he, and he kind of just looked at me and was like, Well, all right, I guess. Uh, we just won't have worship this morning. I'm like, okay. So I got up there and sang them and hated every every second of it. I was just miserable and shaking. And but he grabbed me after after that Sunday morning. He said, "Dude, you have a calling and you have an anointing on your life for leading people in worship, and you need to do this more." That's cool. Um, and so that's what kind of got me into like really this, you know, and then I just kind of started teaching myself one instrument to the next, you know, it'd be like, well, okay, if if I'm not going to, I can't sing and play drums, so maybe I'll play guitar. So I, my friend had a guitar and I, I was like, do you ever use this? And he's like, no. And I'm like, can I have it? He's like, sure. So I grabbed his guitar and I just taught myself how to do that. And yeah. So you learn piano, you learn drums, you learn guitar, you learn to write. Yep. And out of all of that hard work, you just got lucky and got some opportunities. <laughs> hey, yeah, just yeah, so that the harder I work, the luckier I get things. <laughs> it reminds me of the story Charlie Daniels came to the church and we just did his memorial service. Yes, yeah. And Vince Gill came. Yep. And he told this story. He said he was he, the band he was in was opening for Charlie. Yeah. You may have heard it. And their bass player didn't show up. <laughs> and they were so they weren't gonna they said we can't open. And Charlie walked up to Vince and said, I've been listening to you. You're good enough to do it by yourself. So the first time he ever did anything solo, he said he was terrified and shaking. And he went out and opened the show for Charlie. And that was the first time he ever did anything on stage by himself. So some of those divine accidents really turned into some good stuff. Yeah, man, they really are. It is like the most terrifying feeling. But, you know, even reverting back to even like, what you were saying before this of just like listening to the Lord, you know, um, it's funny because I feel like you can probably attest to this as well, but um, everything that I've usually been asked to do from him is very uncomfortable. It's Mm. all, it's always, there are some things that happen very smoothly, but usually it's him. I feel like that's a, uh, what I like to call a blessing, but when it's a calling, there's always something that's just like you're. It's just something out of your comfort zone. It's never like something that you're like, well, of course, this is exactly the way that I thought it was gonna be. You know what I mean? Because I know absolutely, it's not your plan. You know, and it's a mistake to think that people that follow the Lord that it's it's um, simple or fun or comfortable. <laughs> yes. I was I was on my way to medical school. Yeah, and I had this sense that God was asking me to do something else, and I didn't want to hear it. I didn't yeah. want to listen. I didn't want yeah. to ask. I, I certainly didn't want to go into the ministry. Yeah. I didn't even like Christians all that much. <laughs> but I had this quiet sense that if I would get still, God was asking me to do something. And it yep. took all the courage I had. I yep. mean, every drop of it. Yep. And it was like my knees were shaking in my heart. I mean, yeah. and it wasn't a one-time thing. I had to walk that out for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, man. So I, I hear you. That's right. So if we're going to, let's, let's talk to the people for a minute. If somebody has a sense that God's leading you and it's not comfortable or easy, mm. you keep saying yes to the Lord. Mm. You don't have to make the outcome. I even went into ministry and there wasn't any success or churches or nobody wanted to listen to me. I didn't even like public speaking. It was a long time before the fruit of that started to emerge. And I, I bet you played a lot of music before anybody paid for any of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> not good music too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I believe yeah. it. But it were you know there is there is no better thing in life than to say yes to the Lord. Yeah, that's the truth right there, man. And even if you do it, you know, it's, 
uh, God has a way of correcting your course, even if you wander off course. He is so faithful and so mm. good. You can trust him. Yes. And it's not about doing something. I don't have to be successful. I have to be faithful. Oh, that's, dude, that's If I will be faithful, right the Lord will take care of the rest of it. Yes. And sometimes I think we get so torqued up. Yep. You know, people think ministry isn't competitive. I think it's more competitive than any business environment I know, unfortunately. <laughs> but we don't have to be do big things. We just have to honor the Lord. That's right, man. That's right. You know, I uh, I got I got told something that changed because you know I'm, man, I'm just like a California extreme sports kid. You know what I mean? That turned into a worship leader, and you know has been through all kinds of stuff. And but uh, talking about com- competitive, man. You know, after the first couple years of being in music and not even just, you know, and then you wrap the name of Jesus into what we're doing and seeing that, um, man, it was so weird for me to see the competitive nature within the confines of something that is ministry, you know, and you're like, what is this? But, uh, I got told something by a producer in LA who is, a believer, but he's worked on some giant pop records, you know, but he's just this dude. He's a pastor's kid. And man, he is, man, I, his name is Theron Feimster. He's amazing. Just one of the most amazing human beings. And he spoke a word over me and I'll never forget it. And I I just feel very called to say it right now, but, um, anybody that he, he said, man, Oftentimes, have you ever been told to stay in your lane? You know, uh, he. I, I told him, I said, man, like I've been feeling like I've been getting compared and I feel like there's all this weird competitive stuff and I'm just super not that personality and it's just so strange for me and I, I'm I'm struggling with it. And, and, you know, everybody keeps telling me, man, stay in your lane, just stay in your lane. And dude, he couldn't have turned around in that producer chair faster. He literally looked at me and he pointed at me and he just goes, Whoever told you to stay in your lane, I want you to rip them out of your life like a weed. And I literally was, it just stopped me in my tracks because, I mean, we had literally met five minutes before this, you know. And I was like, okay. And he was like, man, he was like, this is the, this is, I have so many artists, so many friends who aren't even in music. Just, this is something that just gets spoken over us. And he said, man, let me tell you something. If I put you in a lane, what is the most plausible thing that you are doing? He was like, you're driving a car. And he's like, and if you're driving, you're calling, if you are driving mm. in anything in your life, That's then you cool. are off base, bro. You are in a lane. And he was like, the way that I feel things need to look is that you are on an airplane. You don't know how to fly an airplane, bro. Jesus is flying that airplane is your job is to look at the assignment that you've been given, follow that assignment. The moment you start wandering up into the cockpit and thinking, oh, maybe I'll twist this knob and do this, of course you're going to— Things are going to get bad. Get bad. They're going to get <laughs> rocky and shaky and scary. <clears throat> and he's like, but man, we were never designed to be the driving force in our life. That's never been That's never been the case. That's never been anything. You, you can go, go, go test me on this, man. He's like— Put put Jesus in your cockpit, man, and just go read your assignment, man. Get in your word, figure your assignment out, and just follow it. And, man, ever since that, man, I mean, talk about some freedom to just feel like, man, it's not about anything other than just exactly where the Lord has you and what He's what He's doing in you and in your in in your community and in your people around you and how where He's leading you and taking you. And, man, so... Anyways, it just felt like that was... Well, I think that's a perfect word for this season because everything has kind of been dumped on the table. Yeah. You know, 2020 is not going to conclude with us being in the lane we were in at the beginning of the year. Not None of us. Close. Everything. Not I feel like even, we're yes. planting a new church. Yes. <laughs> we're doing church outside <laughs> yeah. two days a week and inside one day a week. And yeah. It's like yep. the hokey pokey. You put your <laughs> left foot in and your left foot out. But I, that's true with people's lives all over the country. Yes. And I think rather yep. than be dismayed by it or frightened by it or threatened by it, if we'll listen to the Lord, yes, I fully intend to come through 2020 in a better place, more oh. productive, more fruitful, better prepared. That's right. You and me both, man. But we're having yes. to listen. Yes. And I'm having to listen so much more carefully. Yep. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm really embarrassed by it, the degree to which I used to have a plan that I didn't have to listen. I just had to implement my mm. plan. Oh, man, that's good. And so now I'm saying to the Lord, okay, I'm really listening. Yeah. And then I found myself mad about it. I'm like, I'm tired of listening. And I thought, that's yeah. kind of a cruddy attitude. <laughs> so, okay, Lord, maybe I need to listen every day. Yeah, yeah. And I've had to apologize. I used to make fun of the Exodus generation. Yeah. Because the, when you read the story in the Bible, it feels like they were they were kind of slow. Yeah. Yep. But in reality, once they once they left Egypt, every day was a new day. Mm -hmm. They'd never seen manna before, a pillar of cloud. They'd never seen a tabernacle. They'd yeah. never heard. And they kept meeting these new things every day, and they got fatigued and finally yeah. said, I don't want to go any further. And yep. it says God got angry with them. Yep. So I've been walking around going, okay, Lord, I'm not going to get fatigued. I'm not going to say I don't want to listen anymore. Yeah. I want to cross the Jordan. I want to finish this thing. I want yeah. to do really well. <laughs> yes. So maybe we say a prayer for everybody listening to us. Yeah. That if 2020 has been disruptive and frustrating, hurtful, difficult, mm -hmm. yep. let's say yes to the Lord. Let's say we're listening. Yep. And we want to finish this race. We don't want to complain. I don't want to blame the president or the party that you don't like, or I don't want to blame the Chinese or COVID. Yes. I want to say yes to the Lord. That's right. That's right, man. You want to say that prayer? Yeah. I'll throw an amen in there if let's, you'll pray. Let's go. All yes. right. Father, we just come to you right now, God, and we just, uh, first off, I just proclaim rest and your peace over everybody, our entire country, our entire world, Father, that you you hold um, just so eloquently. And I just pray that you, um, Father, you just guide our hearts and our minds to align with you. Um God, I just pray, <laughs> I just pray that people will be in your word, Father. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, w one of the most challenging things that I've been uh, challenged by in this has been um, almost incessantly listening to you and incessantly reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, because the moment that I'm in and consumed by you, everything else just falls away. There's no more fear. There's no more stress, um, no more panic. And we just claim that in the name of Jesus right now, God, that you would dissolve all fear, um, that you dissolve all burden in the mind and in the hearts of the people listening right now, God. Um, and we just, we thank you, God, we thank you for this season. What a blessing that we get to see Amen. the things Amen. that we have faulted in, that we have gotten comfortable with, that we've gotten so just nonchalant about in, in your word, in your church right now, God, that this would ignite a new fire for our church, Father, that it would literally change the course of <laughs> how our church is is being presented Amen. honestly to people who don't even know you, God. And we just, Hope we thank so. you for that. We thank you for, for a chance to hit the reset button and to meet you and, and in a new way, to see you in a new way, to hear you in a new way, God. And we, we love you so much. Amen. Lord, I thank you. You've kept us and you're bringing us through. I pray for those that are weary today. Give them strength, renew them, refresh them. Lord, those that are the, at the end of themselves and their resources and they don't know where to turn, I pray that the Spirit of God will open a path before them. Hmm. Lord, give us the courage to say yes to you. Those of us that have been reluctant and hesitant, give us the boldness to step out, not in foolishness or presumption, but, Father, to, to have the courage to cooperate with you. I thank you for it. I thank you that you're going to bring us through this year stronger and better prepared for your purposes than we've ever been. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My guest today has been Jordan Felice. Thank you for coming. Yeah, You've yo, been to the church before, you. but you're a blessing. Every time you're here, the man, people are encouraged you. and strengthened. Thank you for what you do. Yeah, thank man, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a, it's really such an honor and a privilege to be here. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hey, you too. Man.